I'm joined now by Hugh Hewitt. He's nationally syndicated talk show host and an MSNBC analyst and Michelle Bernard's president of the Bernard Center for Women, and also a columnist for U.S. News and World Report. Uh, who should we start with? How about you, Hugh? Uh, and this question is, is, let's just talk politics here. And, you know, these, uh, these accounts have not been verified by NBC News. We have to be very clear about that. Trump has denied them, denied them in their entirety. So where do we go from there? John Reed is a legendary evidence professor whom I had at the University of Michigan Law School years ago. Scott Howe, my friend who teaches at Chapman Law School now, another great expert on evidence. They teach you how to categorize and apply one rule across all allegations. Things like excited outbursts, contemporaneous accounts, admissions against interests. Uh, Summer Zervos' account is very detailed. It would lend itself to quick discrediting if it is not, in fact, true. She, she was the woman the club on the sandwich. She's talking about going for a job with Trump in a hotel. Beverly room. Hills Hotel. I know that you know how those place. rooms are. They're all separate bungalows. Yeah. yeah. So the very easily proved. We will find out about that one. How would we find out? Would we have to check the who who was booked? Yes. Who was booked? Yeah, I think that's and, fairly. And so, uh, Trump came up today with, and Mike Pence said in a very tough interview with. Uh, 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 Matt this morning that there would be evidence Matt forthcoming. Lauer. Matt Lauer uh, immediately they brought forward a witness to the first class plane ride from many years ago, but he can't remember what year. And he says he has a good photographic memory, but he can't remember what good year. Not a particularly credible rebuttal, but some how would evidence. You, how, yeah, how would you rebut something on an airplane if somebody did what this woman accused of doing, grabbing basically a bubber dress and that kind of thing, under a dress, whatever? How would you be in a situation where you'd see that? First of all, you'd have to be in the same row. Yes. You don't look, you know, you're, you're not a giraffe, so you can't look over <laughs> three, three rows. You have to be in the same row, and you have to be like, there's and you'd, the, you'd have, you'd have, to, have be to be peering. a unique, yeah. exactly, and watching Donald Trump's hand as closely as the person who was feeling it. Exactly. The person feeling it would obviously be more in touch, literally, with what <laughs> Trump was up to. Absolutely, I don't, I, I don't see that. But they're putting being this fellow able... out as their evidence. Yeah, and, and nothing else. You notice, once again, we hear a promise of something that is coming, and, and I believe towards the end of the day, today, Mike Pence said there's nothing else, at least not right now. Well, I think, right I think he was on to something, because the evidence here is going to end up being the, uh, the accounts of the two people. Because yeah. who else would have the evidence? Yeah. Unless all there's contemporaneous eyewitness. assertions by the person who said they were uh, uh, accosted that way, if somebody was... Uh, uh, Traded that way. One of the rules they, they of evidence. told a bunch of people, like their relatives, that you don't believe what happened on That's the plane. One of the, rule, one of the rules of evidence is did you tell someone contemporaneously? I never believed Anita Hill because they had no contemporaneous accounts other than Janet Napolitano. She did not come forward. Both of the New York Times women had a contemporaneous did you allegation. Other than Janet Napolitano? Yeah, but she did not come forward to testify. Janet Napolitano, I believe, was one of the ones advising uh, Ms. Hill at the time. At the Here, time that but, she accused that. Uh, uh, Clarence, Clarence Thomas. Thomas of doing that. I, I, I believe she was on record as saying that Anita Hill was telling the truth. I'm not quite yeah. sure. Okay. But I will say this. It will all out. The fact that we're talking about it means Donald Trump is losing tonight. A general denial will not work. Specific denials, even if persuasive, are too many to turn back. He has to change the narrative somehow okay. or he'll lose. But, but, you know, Gloria Allred is a smart lawyer. You yes. mean like anything in the law business. A lot of people just don't like lawyers. But yes. she mm -hmm. certainly has that the witness prepared yes that witness has as you just said have very detailed account she was very nervous but she was laying it out there herself yes that was impressive oh, and I'll tell you I read I was I was reading doing a lot of reading today trying to understand what is the psychology that we have as a country where we seem to elevate the needs of uh, men or people who have been accused of sexual misconduct above the needs of the of women who have said that you this person has perpetrated a crime on me and one of the things um, that well, you I, still are innocent of proven guilty under yeah, the law. No, absolutely. Yes. But you, but you see, we ha we live in a in a sort of rape culture and a victim culture and a culture that doesn't believe women when they say that I, they have been sexually abused. You think abused. people don't believe this this uh, account by these women today? Well, I believe that uh, all of the women that I've been watching on every network. You don't think on, these on women are believed today, right now? I don't believe that many. I believe that there are a lot of people who do not believe them. I believe that there are people who who say that it didn't happen, or if it did happen, it was no big deal. There well, are women all account. over the nation. I think I would you remember, would you agree support. that false allegations abound. There were false allegations sure. in at Claremont uh, McKenna College earlier last year. There are false allegations all over the United States. We have to be careful with them as a political matter. If you're defending false or true, you're losing. You're well, losing. No, I badly. understand what you're saying, but I'm. But it, as a woman, it is 
so unbelievably okay. irritating we to have know. to hear about okay, look, the I fact we that it like, could be false. Okay. It could be false. We know that. It's like these police it's... cases. I always say to people, treat each case as a case. That's why we have a yeah. courtroom. Because yes. each case is different. A little different from everyone else, or else we wouldn't need a court. Well, and if you're going to assume Donald Trump is innocent until proven guilty, but that also means that the victim or the alleged victim is to be believed and taken proven. very seriously. Exactly. Okay, well, like, as I reported, Trump yesterday lashed out at his accusers, his political rivals in the media, saying they're part of a conspiracy to destroy him. Let's watch him. The establishment and their media enablers wield control over this nation through means that are very well known. Anyone who challenges their control is deemed a sexist, a racist, a xenophobe, and morally deformed. I knew these false attacks would come. I knew this day would arrive. It's only a question of when. This is a conspiracy against you, the American people, and we cannot let this happen or continue. Well, in his speech today, President Obama today mocked Trump for his latest conspiracy theory. Let's watch that. Apparently, in a speech yesterday, he started talking about global elites, that, that there was a conspiracy of global elites. This is a guy who spent all his time hanging around trying to convince everybody he was a global elite. <laughs> talking about how great his buildings are, and how luxurious, and how rich he is, and flying around everywhere. And, all he had time for was celebrities. And now suddenly he's acting like he's a populist out there. Man, I'm going to fight for working people. Come on, man. So what do we make of this uh, wild uh, accusation? It seemed like an accusation. Be careful, Mr. President, because they could come for you. Well, I, I, accus is that, was that a way of just telling his people, which I would understand politically, hey, this is all a charade anyway, so I can play this too? Or is it trying to spur perhaps some accusations. Well, uh, that's what I believe. I, I, I honestly believe that when you have somebody running for president and they make this kind of statement, be careful, it could happen to anyone, and he says it over and over and over again, I believe that he is, he is sort of saying to some nutcase out there, or maybe or maybe not, um, please accuse President Obama. If you've had any troubles with President Obama or if you think you've had some president, uh, problems with President Obama, if he has ever uh, you know, engaged in any sort of sexual misconduct with yeah, you. Yeah, that would be unlikely with that. Well, it, well, it would be highly unlikely because, quite frankly, uh, given everything that the president went through to be elected in 2008, if something like that had happened, I think okay. we would have heard I about it. I want to thank the for president office. for uh, helping my party and rallying my base, leading from behind, red line. Okay, uh, can yeah. we, I want to help you here. I, I, you don't have to do this. He, <laughs> he is going and to help I, us rally. I don't our care base. about your party or the other party, but let me tell you something. What's really sad about this election, if it's going to be based on this, okay, it's going to be based on this. Hillary Clinton might as well go sit in a rocking chair because this That's is going to take doing. care of it. But, and, no, but, but there is a problem here. The, the, the sentiment. That Trump tapped into, whether he believed it or not, and I have very great suspicions he didn't believe in any yes. of it. The concerns about trade and lost manufacturing jobs among the working class people of this country, all races. Yes. Concerns about uh, the lack of any reasonable control over immigration that doesn't seem to be going on. And third, wars that we really didn't benefit from in terms of our security and the perception of most people who are working class people whose kids had to go out and fight those battles. Yes. They're going to be betrayed by this because what will happen is people are not going to vote on those issues. They're going to vote on the personal fitness of the candidate. And that, I think, is a loss. We should have had a vote. They're like they did on Brexit in England. Have a vote on the issues, and I'm afraid we're not going to have But they're going to vote down ticket on Obamacare because premiums have doubled, as okay. Bill Clinton get, said, and costs is half of it. They're going to vote on that, which is their lunchbox issue. Who cares about so who's going to win on the basis of that? Maybe the senators are going to win. Paul Ryan is going to win. No, the senators Pat are going to win. Pat Toomey is going to win. Kelly Ayotte's going to win. But, Richard Burr is going to win. You, Joe I mean, Heck, the doctor, is going to win. You're just saying all but, the Republicans are going to win. They are going to win. We're going to win. All hold Republicans are going to win. No, not all. We're not going to win Mark Kirk. I'm happy that you're going to back dead Bob tonight, aren't you? Mark Kirk is dead. Now, okay. Well, he's, I'm, ex I'm glad that you're excited to talk about Congress tonight, but we have to, I mean, we have to focus on the presidency. We are the greatest who isn't? nation. Well, Hugh right now wants to talk about members of Congress who are going to, you know, who are going to win their election. He's elections. salvaging. He's well, riding he, the salvage he, boat. He, he is salvaging. <laughs> I, am going, I, I, I am going He's back. He's trying to save the right. I know it. I am going Make back your point. to the presidency. If Donald Trump truly believed that this was coming, and he's been waiting for it, and he was going to be prepared, he would have had evidence on his side waiting for the day that these accusations were going to come forward. I don't, for any uh, stretch of the imagination, believe that he thought this day was going to come. And okay. quite frankly, from a woman's perspective, if you are an abuser, and I said if 
to be nice. But if you are an abuser, if you are someone who gauges in predatory sexual behavior, right. you never think that you're going to get caught. And the reason you don't think you're going to get caught is because we live in a culture okay. where women are not believed when they make these allegations. Thank you. Thank you. That's an argument. Anyway, thank you, Hugh Hewitt. I don't think it's that bad. Michelle Bernard, <laughs> thank you.